Hello and welcome back. Professor Hendricks here and today I would like to talk about Python operators. So we've touched on operators a little bit in the context of different data types and how the same operator may have a different meaning depending upon the data types that it's applied to. So recall the situation if I go into the Python terminal by typing in Python. So we had an example where it was like x equals 5 and y equals 7. So we have you know, addition, multiplication, and similarly, if we try confirming the type for each of these, we know that that's an int, but if we divide, we get a float. So we've already seen that in some cases, we can combine two different data types, even two different examples of the same data type, and the result, based on a particular operator, is a different data type. Similarly, if we said x less than y, that's all a Boolean data type, so we could define a variable to be x less than y. And so less than and greater than can be viewed, of, viewed as comparative operators, and the result will be a Boolean. There are other comparative operators. For example, if we want to see if two values are equal, we would use two equal signs. So a single equal sign, as we've seen, even in this screen right here, x equals or y equals 7 here at the top, that assigns a value to a variable, and it also creates the variable or it creates the instance of the data type. But if I do something like this, b will have the value of false and b, b will of course have the, the type of a bool. Similarly, we can check to see if two values are not equal. And so that uses exclamation point, also known as bang, followed by the equal sign. And so this visually looks kind of like an equal sign with a line through it, kind of, not really, but kind of, or at least that's how I've always thought of it. And so bang equals refers to the not equal operator. It assesses if two variables do not have the same value, and double equals will assess if two variables have the same value. And so in this instance, b will have the uh, Boolean value of true. Another example that may not be obvious is the exponentiation operator. So we can raise x to the seventh power, or rather x to the yth power in this instance, some large number, by using this double asterisk. So the data type here, so if we assign this to a variable, if we said z equals that and tried type of z, we see that it's int. But what if x was negative 1? And what if y was actually a float 1 over 2? So we can confirm that y is float and y is the value of 0 0.5. So I mentioned before that the imaginary number is the square root of negative 1. So what happens if we say x to the y power, we get this kind of weird result. If we assign this to a variable, we can confirm that the type is in fact complex. And so we can see that we're essentially taking the square root of a negative number and we're getting a complex value. So this is yet another example of combining two of the same data type in this case, or actually these are two different data types. You have an int and a float. We're combining them with the exponentiation operator and getting a different data type, the complex variable. You could also consider strings. So strings, in the case of strings, so if I have ACGT, and you can assess whether those that's equal to, say, ACG, it's not equal, but with that T, it's equal, and similarly, you can use not equal to, you know, to assess whether two strings have the same value. Another important operator in the context of strings that I mentioned before is string concatenation. So the plus sign means to concatenate two strings. So what if we had x on 1 equals some, some like, uh, actually I shouldn't use t's, I should stick to u's, and some, some sequence here, and x on 2 with some other sequence, we might expect these to be concatenated. And we might say, x on 1 plus x on 2 would be our transcript, our spliced transcript, it might be the concatenation of those exons. So you can imagine a situation where you had some annotation of the genome, you retrieved the genomic sequences of those exons, maybe convert the t's to u's, and then concatenate them to produce this transcript. And so string concatenation it uses the plus sign, just like addition. And it kind of makes sense because you're sort of combining them together. And so I guess I kind of like to think of these operators as chemical reactions. So 
depend, you know, depending upon how you combine two of the atoms of Python, which are the, the basic data types, we use the operators to combine them to produce some output. And that output is kind of like a chemical reaction. It can be, in some cases, the same data type, or it can be a new data type, a new compound that, that results from that, that reaction. So in other words, we've seen a lot of examples of that, but I could also say, you know, for example, sodium and chloride, when combined, produces sodium chloride. But similarly, if I concatenate the chemical symbols of sodium and chloride, I get sodium chloride as well. Here's an interesting little tidbit. If I take some strain, let's just say ACGT, and I multiply it with the asterisk by an int, the result is repeated concatenation. And the way I like to think about that is it's sort of like doing this. In other words, concatenating a string with itself three times is an equivalent operation to multiplying by the number three. In other words, a string can be multiplied by an int to produce a repeated instance of that string. And of course, that seems pretty useful if you want to create poly A, you know, like 100 A's. That's something that can be done. I created this transcript, and I'd like to show you yet another operator, and that is the remainder operator. So if I have some number, like say 100, and I want to know what is the remainder when divided by 9. I know that 99 is less than 100, so I expect the remainder to be 1. Because I know that 9 times 11 is 99, and so the output of this is 1. So, And the result will be the remainder if you divide those two integers. And so in this example of this transcript that I have here, I may be interested in the length of that transcript, and I may be interested in whether or not the length of that transcript is a multiple of three. And so in this instance, I get one, meaning it is not a direct multiple of three. So this transcript, as you can see, begins with an AUG and ends with a UGA. So it looks a lot like it could have been a valid open reading frame because it has a start codon or at least a trinucleotide that matches a start codon and a trinucleotide that matches the stop codon. But it does not have a multiple of three nucleotides in between so therefore, it is not a valid open reading frame because it needs to have, it needs to fit with that the codon triplet uh, structure. I hope I've made clear that there's a lot of different operators and they can be combined in different ways. And there are more operators that I haven't talked about and we'll, we'll visit them on a case-by-case -case basis as we move forward. So with that, I'll end this and I'll see you next time.